Well, the holidays are here, Christmas is fast approaching, and one of the stressful parts about the holiday season can be gift shopping. What I've done in this video is put together a little list for the knife maker in your life, even if that knife maker is you. These are all tools that I use every day, and most of them I never had when I started making knives, but they're all tools that I use constantly in pretty much every knife build. So I've put together a little collection of them, hopefully just to give you guys some ideas, maybe you can show this to your, your significant other or people that are buying for you, and it might give them some inspiration. So the first tools we're gonna look at are simple machinist squares. I have two of them, a small one I think is about a three inch, and then a six inch. I keep these out on my bench, they don't go in drawers because I'm always grabbing them. Whether I'm cutting up scale material or marking out shoulders for hidden tang knives, it is incredible how handy it is to have a nice, heavy, the, the weight of them kind of makes them uh, useful uh, as opposed to a sliding square. And these things are just wonderful, I use them constantly. Along those same lines, we've got one, two, three blocks. Again, this is a, a machining specific tool, but they come in really handy for knife making. Very precisely ground at one inch by two inch by three inches, would you believe? You'll notice too, some of the holes on the one, two, three blocks are tapped. That makes it really handy for bolting down to fixtures and jigging things up. I use these things constantly when I'm knife making and they apply to a lot of other aspects as well. Even giving yourself some clearance on a drill press when you're drilling out the scales of your knife, really nice to have these and you don't have to worry about messing up the angle of the dangle when you're drilling your hole. And you really can never have too many one, two, three blocks. Number three are cant twist clamps. These things are amazing. I use these things all the time and especially in knife making where you don't want to mar the surfaces. They're kind of like a pinch clamp thing. Uh, you know, a traditional C clamp, you've got the rotating pad and sometimes that can make marks on your scale material. Not with these guys. They are fantastic. The jaws kind of swivel. So if you're dealing with uh, tapered tangs or something like that, they can definitely still put a lot of pressure on there. I don't use these things for glue up, but I do use them for drilling, marking, and oh, they're just fantastic tools. Definitely glad I have a set of those. Now, item number four on my list is going to be for people that already have a belt grinder. This is the Bill Banky Radius Platen. It's a 36 inch radius, so the idea behind it is that it simulates a six foot diameter grinding stone that they'll use in a lot of traditional knife making. I think Japanese knife makers would use something with a radius a lot like this. This is a piece of hardened steel that's been hard chromed and it wears really, really well. And you kind of bolt this in. He makes them for different grinders with different hole spacings. This one I have is for the KMG grinder. And I really, really am growing to like the 36 inch radius grind. I find it's a really nice balance between a flat grind and a hollow grind. I mean, I think once you grind with these, you appreciate the balance, the little place in between you can meet between like a hollow and a flat. And for that, the Bill Banky Radius Platen is absolutely fantastic. Item number five on the list, also from Bill Banky, his Bill Banky File Guide. Now, these are stainless bars that have a precision locating holes and pins, so it keeps them very parallel. And on the surface bonded to it are pieces of carbide. Now, that carbide is incredibly wear resistant. Essentially, you kind of clamp this onto either side of your knife. The nice thing about this is it's a really straight plane on both sides of your blade that you can actually work to with abrasives, with files. You can use this for doing plunge lines, keeping plunge lines perfectly straight from one side to the other. Absolutely a gem of a tool. You're gonna really appreciate having one of these in your shop. Item number six is a checkering file. This is a Gobert checkering file. Double zero is how it's designated, and it has 20 of those little teeth per inch. This is about the coarsest that they come, and this is a really nice way to add a very professional jimping in an efficient manner. Again, I'm using my file guide there to keep everything centered and lined up, and a few passes with that, and boom, you've got a really nice touch for some extra traction for thumb jimping. Some people like to put it on the butt of their knives. All kinds of options. Quick pro tip, if you wanna keep this thing working really smooth when it's brand new, put a little chalk in there. This applies to all files. Really helps make a difference. Now, item number seven here is a bit of a shameless plug. This is the knife maker sanding block that I make. Uh, I got this idea from Aaron Go, and uh, he's cool with me making and selling these. I've actually communicated with him about that. And uh, it's basically a piece of aluminum with grooves machined into it with two aluminum rods held in place by O-rings. And those rods slide down into the grooves, thus gripping onto that sandpaper. It keeps it really nice and tight. 
and the flat surfaces of the aluminum make it fantastic for sanding, hand sanding your blades. And then changing out the sandpaper is really, really quick. This is a nice time saving tool and I use mine all the time. I've got links where you can buy them below. Check that out. All right, the next one is very inexpensive. This doesn't make appearance in a lot of my videos, but I do use this tool all the time. If I've got one or two little holes to deburr in, uh, in steel, or when I'm doing Kydex, I use this for deburring my Kydex holes all the time. A handheld countersink, very inexpensive, really handy. Next up are needle files. Again, these are little things that I didn't have when I'd started knife making, but there's so many applications for these, whether you're cleaning up some shoulders of knives for the hidden tang blades, or if you're putting in a little Spanish notch, which is that sharpening choil, these things are really handy and not very expensive. They range from 10 to $40 for a set. Even the set of Nicholson's was only about 20 bucks. Really handy tool. Now this here is the Tormek knife sharpening clamp and you may wonder why on earth would this be here unless you'd have a Tormek. Well there are ways to adapt this for grinding and sharpening your knives. I've actually done a few bevels, I, I'm still experimenting with some jigs that I'm making, but grinding bevels with this, moderate amounts of success, but for sharpening this is absolutely wonderful. This is a handy handy tool to have. Now this last one is a bit of a mystery tool. I've had a lot of comments, a lot of people were wondering, what the heck is that wooden thing on your workbench? Well, you ready for the reveal? It's a set of pin punches. Sterrett pin punches. These are pretty expensive. You don't need this style for sure. In fact, this is an overkill. Uh, my dad had actually bought these for one of my birthdays. Primarily, big thing that I use these for is when I'm fitting up handle scales and I need to drive the pins out. This, in combination with a 1-2-3 block, makes stuck pins come out really nice and neat. And when you've got the varying sizes, you can make sure you're hitting on the outside of the pins and it prevents damaging. Really handy tools. Not absolutely 100% necessary, but I really like having them in the shop. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed and I hope all of you have a fantastic holiday season. Cheers.